Hello, everyone. All right. Welcome back. Second to the last show of the day. One of my favorites. I'm so looking forward to this one. Uh, one of my favorite people of all time. Uh, everybody, welcome, Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Hello. I'm sorry. I'm in the background here just jamming away to the, the music that you're playing. I'm just sitting here beating in my own drum. It's all right. Hey, everybody. So um, I'm really, like I said, I'm really excited for your class today because it is something that I don't know how to do. So um, I'm really excited to see you do it. So with that, I'm just going to turn it over to you. Awesome. Thanks so much. Well, hello, everyone. If you guys don't know who, my, who I am, I am Nikki Adanquit. Um, I'm known as the Sassy Subber, and I teach a lot of things when it comes to sublimation. And one of the things that we have the largest problem with is when we buy a heat press that we can afford, right? We can only buy that 15 by 15, for an example. And we really wish we had bought that 16 by 20, but we don't want to let the fact that we have that 15 by 15 deter us from doing those larger print items. About four years ago, I started using the board method because, well, somebody said just do it, but never taught me how. Over the last four years, I have been perfecting the method and teaching it to all of you. So what are you going to need for this class, so to speak, right? <clears throat> You're going to need to go to your Home Depot or your Lowe's, and there's a section that has plywood and MDF. It's usually and typically about four, uh, four foot by two foot. Now, I cut that down to two different sizes because I have two different size presses. So for my little press that we're going to work on today, it's a 15 by 15. And the board that I have is 16 by 24. The other half of that board that I just told you about, I use for my bigger press. I use that for my bigger blankets, all of that fun stuff. So you're going to need that. You're also going to need some Teflon. The Teflon is what I wrap over that board, one, to protect the board, protect your investment. And actually, it makes it a lot easier for sliding it back and forth. It makes it easier for taping your stuff to the board. You'll see that once we hop over to the other camera. Now, again, what you decide to put on it is your, your own choice. But like I said, you could buy that really inexpensively from Amazon. I'm also going to be using in this tutorial today, we're going to be using the neoprene by the yard. Um, I'm using the three millimeter. Uh, if you're looking for the product item number for that, it's MP021. They do have a thicker version, which is MP022. So I buy it by the yard. I cut it down because we're going to go over and make a game board out of it. I'm going to show you some things, but here I need to have a visual for you for a second. It's going to be harder with that camera overhead. So let me give you a visual about what happened. Somebody asked a great question um, in the pre-questions was, how do you press something? You're going to hear me talk about peaks and valleys and why we have to move the board the way we do. But let me give you the best visual I could probably come up with. So you have your piece of paper. Okay, and here's what happens, whoops, sorry. Here's what happens when you're, you put your heat press down into it. It creates this basically this valley, if you will. All right, it pushes down on the item and it kind of pinches it. When I'm talking to you guys over at the heat press, why you wanna move that valley in underneath your heat press, because you don't wanna keep pressing on that. It creates lines in your design. The less you do that, the better off we are. So I'm hoping that I'm going to switch the cameras over correctly. Just give me a second. Okay. Hopefully you guys can all hear me over here. And I'm loud. Maybe a sprite can let me know that I'm I'm on. <laughs> yeah, then, we, we can hear you. Perfect. Okay, so here you go. This is the board that I use. As you guys can see, it is covered with a Teflon. Let me flip it over. And all it is was a piece of MDF. Um, it's actually a shelf board that I happen to have laying around, but you can get them two by four. I staple it into the board, and then I tape it. Why do I tape it? Because you want to make sure that this can slide across your heat press. So this is 24 inches by 16 inches because my, my bottom platen is only 15. Here's the neoprene. As you guys know, neoprene can sometimes not be very forgiving when it comes to those dimples, that trench, if you will, and when you press your, if you press it too hard. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to press this. I'm going to light it all up. We're going to talk about it. Let me get my print here. So I always like to use butcher paper. We're protecting our investment. You would like to lint roll because neoprene is known for having lint all over it. So make sure you have lint roll your um, items always. Uh, lip roll it. Now this is bigger than my image because I'll go back to and trim it up once we're done. All right, pull this over and we'll get to talking about some more of the specs and details of this. I'm going to put the board here so that we can talk about it a little bit easier, but let's just get this all prepped first. Now you could use some Condi Pro Spray. I do not have Condi Pro Spray, so we're going to tape it. Probably I'll keep mentioning that. I should probably buy my Condi Pro Spray at some point. Okay, so let's use this board as a visual because it's hard to see underneath my press. So, hold on, sorry, I took off the paper. <laughs> there we go. So here's what we want to do. When you're putting this on your heat press, Make sure that your image is there. You can tape this down, and here's why I'm going to tell you you can tape it down. Do you have to? Absolutely not. You don't have to. I'm going to tape this because here's what's the ease about having this on the board versus if I just had it on my heat press, okay? By having it on the board, it allows for me to take the board and just turn it. If I were to have it just on my heat press, which you're going to see in this image, if I were to have the paper on here, it's going to droop. What happens when this droops down, it causes your fabric to stretch down. So when you're going to shift it in, you've kind of moved your image. By having the board, it makes it so it stops your image from shifting, drooping. You have less likely of a chance of it um, off-gassing, double press, like have double press marks on it. So I taped it down my board. And we're going to put it on the heat press. Now, one of the things I like to teach is the pencil method. Why the pencil method? As I told you before in the, when I was over at the other camera, is when your press hits down on here, it creates basically a trench. It creates a pinch mark in your fabric. It's fabric. So it, it's, it's creating a dimple. How do we work that? We put a pencil mark, we come right down with the pencil mark, so we know where that guide is. And the guide allows us for when we're pushing this back in under, that we can make sure that it's completely under the heat press. You're less likely to have a line when you do that. So, what are the purposes? Again, see how I can move this in the camera? And I, this is not drooping at all. Nothing is shifting. You could do this for baby blankets. You could do this for any large item. It helps so that things don't bend and it gives you just an extra hand. It makes that bottom flatten um, just bigger for you. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna press this. I'm gonna add some butcher paper to the top because we always protect our investments. But with the butcher paper on the top, I wanna come in just in under slightly under my press. So I'm, if my press is here, I'm going to come in just slightly. It's harder to see on the camera, but I'm going to come in just slightly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to press it at 395 or 65 is what I do for my heat press. And I'm going to go to a medium pressure. You don't want to do squish me pressure. You want to go, and that's firm pressure for those who speak normal, you know, sublimation speak. Um, I use squish me pressure terms. If you're using the medium pressure, you're less likely to have those dimple marks right in here. Okay, so we're going to just drop this down. Now, it doesn't matter how I like this is completely uneven at this point, but that doesn't matter. That's not the point. So I take my pencil, never use a pen. Your pen will actually bleach, bleed through the paper. I'm going to go just like this. I want to know just in case I don't see where the paper has yellowed a little bit because of the heat. I want to know where that trench is. So that when I have, when I take this part off and I spin it around, I want to make sure that I have at least, and I think you guys can see this in the camera. So if this is where the line is, I want to put my heat press basically over in here. 
I want that trench to be far enough in under so that it doesn't create another trench, if you will. You just keep pressing on that mark, you're gonna end up with white marks. Now, what are some things that you can do to combat this issue? Well, you can make a design that's pretty forgiving, meaning that it's a, a so, not a solid background, but has some uh, deflections in it, has some design in it. As you can see, I got too close. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's too close on there. It is a faint line right in that section because I got too close. I didn't bring it over far enough. But if you put a pattern design in underneath, you are less likely to have issues. Now, I'm going to take that butcher paper off for a second, just the butcher paper, nothing else. You're going to watch how I just turn it. Look, mom, no hands. Okay, and the reason we're doing this is, again, I could tell you, I could see that dimple right in through here. Okay, there's a dimple in there. We don't want the dimple. We want to make sure that we are far enough in under our platen to be able to not have that dimple. Okay, because dimples are not fun. All right, so now we're going to press that in there. We're going to drop it down, and there you go. As you can see, my image is coming through here which is going to be absolutely stunning when we're done. I'll go through and I'll trim it up. Again, if you're doing a baby blanket, if you're doing anything large and you're just terrified to do it, see if you could change the background to something that's a little bit more busy, a little bit more forgiving. You're less likely to have your eye pick up on those little lines or create lines in your design. You can do whatever you want with your image to make it so it's easier for you. This just stops everything from drooping from your, your, and I'll show you when I take this off, if this were to droop down, now I've created a bigger issue because this could have shifted with me turning it. We don't want that. We've got about 20 more seconds. I'm going to go to the comments. I will show you, uh, oh, never be scared. Never be scared of the big items. That's why I have that big board. It's 30 by 30. Uh, 24. I lay my baby blanket out and it allows for me to shift things without fighting them. That's the biggest problem when you're doing this. Okay. So if I did this correctly, which if anybody's ever watched me for a hot second knows that I at least mess up something at least once in a while and just shows you that I'm not hundred percent perfect. You notice, look, I am still moving it. My image has not moved. It did not droop. Nothing. So let's see. Oh, well. I'm terrified. I think I'll lie. I'm no pro, but. Okay. Not too shabby. I was too close to the edge. So you see how, which means I can tell you this. If you can see that in my image, you see how this right here, my pressure is probably too heavy. That's why I'm getting that light. It's too heavy. I'm creating the ditch. So I probably want to back off my pressure just a little bit because neoprene does swell a little bit. So I could have backed off <clears throat> my pressure just a little bit and it would have been perfect because if you notice over here, there's no line from where I, I double pressed it. And you can't even tell that I double pressed this section right here. There's no line. But because the initial first line was too hard of a press, and it's, it's, it's one of those things you just got to practice with it. This is why buying the neoprene by the yard is a gift because you can practice on this and make some pretty cool items. But with that said, I will ease up my pressure on my next one and it will come out flawless. So, um, and remember to check your pressure each time. If you notice these two are horribly bad with the line, it could have been whatever I wanted to do. And there you go. Let me see if there's any questions. It is a total game changer, right? Total game changer. So I'm going to bring that press back over. And I'm going to show you what would happen. So we're going to just take this back on real quick. Because I feel as if this will make, it visually makes more sense. And when we do this. Now I'm not going to repress it. I just want to show you something. Okay. So we've got the heat press under here. I want to put this on. Okay. Watch what happens to this. Now I'm going to want to put this in. Now 
if I were to drop this down, it's going to create an even more, it's going to create a deeper gully. All right. Because one, I'm pushing down on it. Right. Now I've got that as a problem. And because this is, this is right here. Right. What I mean is you're going to end up with that gully, a bigger gully, call it something, trench, we're all in the trenches, um, right here. So when you're bending this over, this is a sharper edge. It's going to create a, a lot more issue by having the board you're less likely to have that issue okay when you're putting it on top of here and you put it down this droops down now i'm done right and i've, I've got to repress the next side how am i supposed to pick this up and if anybody knows anything tape does not like to stick to neoprene very well so when you're literally trying to move this you've shifted your image already you've already shifted it and now you're going to go press it and you're going to end up with a disaster so let's take the disaster method out use the board and that is your extra set of hands to help you do this any questions in there let me see i did not know you could buy neoprene by the yard yes you can i make a lot of game boards with this um and i will show you just a quick for you guys to watch and yes and you can buy these little game board pieces right online and you can make this this is what probably and this is the reason i chose this project because game boards are the hottest thing for christmas this year and these are a great grab and go and travel so again make sure that you guys check out mp021 and mp022 for the neoprene by the yard and you can cut it yourself and have a ball so there you go do you have a line because you overlapped? Okay, so I have the line because I had too much pressure. Um, I had a little too much pressure. I would not have had that line if my pressure was just cut back just a little bit. Um, and that's just something when you're learning your press. Uh, so that initial first line is key. You don't want a ton of pressure. Because you're still going to be going in and repressing that area, it would cover it up if it was light, if it was too light, right? So yes that is the reason there was just a little too much pressure causing a trench from my heat press not because i didn't line it up because my heat press actually sat over the top like this when i was so this is the initial line right like this there you go it literally was over that line so that was just a pressure issue on my end the game pieces came from amazon I know somebody, someone asked earlier, but how thick is your board? Um, that is a half inch board. You just don't buy it right at the Home Depot or the Lowe's and make sure that you, um, make sure you cut it. You can have them cut it down or you can cut it down and then just cover it with the Teflon. MDF, um, let's see, Game Boards Genius, thank you. Manufacturer is probably easier to move. Or MDF is probably easier to move. Um, I guess I actually I use ply. It's plywood too. I have a plywood one. It doesn't really matter. You just want a half inch board, and you go into their section where they sell the two foot by four foot, and then this way you can do what you need to do there. This works in all directions. Absolutely, it does work in all directions. So when you're taking that board. You are taking that board and you're literally, you can just turn it however you choose. You can do just corners on it. And by having the Teflon wrap around this bottom edge here um, and stapling it in, it allows for me to have it so that it runs smoothly. You also want to make sure that you have a piece of Teflon on top of your bottom platen because it won't, it won't have a um, easy glide if it's on top of the foam piece. So put a piece of Teflon on your bottom platen, take your board, and see how easy this is i can do a lot more things this way i can do garden flags on here we could do blankets um panel blankets all that kind of stuff uh, if even pillowcases maybe you only have a 9 by 12. you can actually use this on a 9 by 12. just make sure you adjust your pressure practice first before you press your items all right get where your pressure needs to be get your method down but the board is definitely a game changer when it comes to all of this wonderfulness. 
Can you overlap it safely or let it cool? Let me, I overlap. I have no problems with it overlapping. When you, let me see, when you move the substrate on the board, does part of the image fade due to double pressing? It did not for this. Um, I typically don't see any of those issues when it comes to this kind of stuff, uh, the fabric type things. Just because fabric is definitely more forgiving, I don't see a, a difference in shade now. It looks like it is here, but that's because the wood that I used in the background, it is darker on one end, it's lighter on the other. So probably a poor example of that. But um, no, I have no issues with that whatsoever. Uh, it allows for me to also do large cutting boards uh, as well. You just have to practice, make sure you get your pressure correctly so that you know. And pressure varies, obviously, between different substrates. Do you remove the bottom pad? I do not remove my bottom pad. Can you? You can if you want to. I don't. And the reason being is that I have to cover it with Teflon to begin with so that the board will slide easier on that bottom platen. Thank you. I try to use a lot. Um, so I'm also a graphics designer, so I, I do a lot of this stuff. And this was one of the ideas that we came out with was Doing game boards using the neoprene. Are there things that you have made with this process? Yes, flags, cutting boards. I've done baby blankets. I've done regular blankets. Um, some people have done the lumbar pillows, the 12 by 18, because they only have a 15 by 15. So they've done the lumbar pillows for that. And I'll show you. Do I have my lumbar pillow right here? So in your condi box, you can get in the Christmas and July box, you can get this 12 by 18 pillowcase. Now, let me give you some quick suggestions for this. I tried putting my design down further. I want to make sure the zipper is hanging off the edge of my press and that it doesn't go under because this is really bulky. Even with it zippered, unzippered, it's still a bulky item. Um, and it, that's just the nature of the beast. So I should have moved my image up, but it does allow for me to have a big image, let's say you have that small 12 by nine press. Maybe you didn't, you couldn't afford at the time. That don't want this to stop you. I want you to be able to do larger items with the board. I now know new use for neoprene by the yard. Yup, there's so many things to do with the neoprene. I thought the neoprene was, yeah, I get it. Yay! I had trouble getting my heat press to close using the board. Any suggestions? It depends on your heat press. So you might just have to try to get it as high as you can or see if you can remove that bottom um, foam. If you can remove the bottom foam, just put a piece of neoprene over the, the base base of it and see if you could do it that way. I've seen almost all presses be able to do this method, um, but it would be half one of those things that I would have to see your press to be able to help you. So welcome. Let me see. Do you have the die cutter for the corners? Oh, do you? Have, I don't. I didn't die cut the corners at all. I just used my I just used my rotary cutter and a ruler and just cut it. That's how I cut the neoprene by the yard. It was super easy. Just using your fabric rotary cutter. You can do any shapes that you want um, with it, and then use your board method. Everybody needs to go buy some neoprene and a board. You need a board. I'm going to switch over to the other camera, see if there's any other further questions. And I'm back over here. So hopefully you guys learned something today. The board method was basically put out there to make life just easier for you. It allows for you guys to do larger uh, substrates without fear of your image moving or it drooping or the shifting. It allows for you to have a free hand because there's nothing worse than trying to press like a baby blanket or any blanket for that matter and having it droop off the edge of your press, right? And then your paper dripping off of it, it becomes a mess. 
the bonus part about having that board is you can get those big, huge clips and you can clip your substrate to the board as you're shifting it around. That can also help as well. I want you to be able to go into things without fear. And the board method honestly has saved me on a lot of my projects when it came to me having a 15 by 15 press. Listen, I get it. I understand when we're in getting into this business, we might not be able to afford the 16 by 20 or the 16 by 24. Trust me, I've been there. Maybe you could only afford that 15 by 15. I want to be able to show you along with all the other educators here how to do sublimation with success. And that's what this is all about. So I'm happy I opened your eyes to the board method. I was literally shocked when Sprite, when Sprite had no idea about the board method. Like I was puzzled. I figured she has already pressed everything like I have. She knew every method possible. And she literally stopped at her tracks when her and I were having a conversation about the board method. She goes, you're going to do what? Yeah, the board method. Haven't you heard of it? She's like... Well so, you know, to be fair, I'm I'm pretty spoiled. So I do have like a maxi press and a 32 inch press. So I, I know, I know. I mean, not me personally, but at my disposal. So. No, but you know what? There are people and that's a beautiful point, though. There's a lot of us in the game that are at all different levels. Yeah. There's the home user. There's the just starting out in this business. And there's people who have been able to upgrade. But even with my 16 by 20, I have a 30 by 24. So it, it didn't matter that I had a larger press that would fit the print of my pr you know, my printer, but it was more than that for me. I wanted to be able to have my hands be a little less going ah, all over the place, you know, and, and that's why the board method is, is a huge game changer when it comes to doing these large items. Yeah. And I saw um, I saw somebody ask about uh, doing, have you ever done metal, like larger pieces of metal with the board method? Mm-hmm. And you don't get the fading uh, and mm -hmm. the overlap. That's fantastic. See? No, nope. no. Nope. But the thing is, is you have to, like with everything else, you and I teach this all the time. You have to figure out your time, temp, and pressure because everybody's time, temp, and pressure is completely different. Um, and my squish the heck out of me could be your medium, you know, depending on if we had our charios that day. That's just how it works. But it's, it's one of the things perfect your method, buy an extra one or two and then just go for it. You will figure it out. It's not that scary. Yeah. No, so, I mean, that looked that looked easy. I, I mean, I hate scary. to say it, like knock on wood, but it did, it looked really, really easy. And the key is really buying that Teflon by the roll because you can wrap it right around the board. And what happens is because you cut that wood, it snags on your items or it can snag on the bottom. So by wrapping that board up, it allows for it to freely just slide over that bottom platen. Now, uh, as for whether or not it can fit on your press, you can use a quarter of an inch. Um, absolutely. It's just that it might warp over time. That's why I use the half inch. But again, it's only wood. You can take off the Teflon, go buy a new piece of wood, and there you go. Or flip it over and rewrap it so it warps the other way. Um, I just have found I've had the same board for three and a half years, and I've had no issues with it. So yeah, there you go. There's there's my, my how-to. <laughs> I wonder if there's any other questions. You have to just go get it. I'll have to Home Depot. A lot of people, Home Depot and those are about to uh, get bombarded at the moment. Absolutely. Do you have to add extra time using your board? Absolutely not. Um, because it's not like metal, right? Because metal just absorbs that heat and it quickly heats up. I would not use anything metal as your board method. The wood um, just kind of absorbs the heat. So I don't have to add any extra time. I don't even have to decrease the time actually for using the plywood or the MDF, whatever you can get your hands on, really. Just do not use pegboard. Anything with holes in it will cause an issue. So there's my disclaimer. Nothing, I know that you might find the pegboard in that same section. Don't use anything with ridges. Don't use anything with holes in it. Um, I know that you can find, I think it's the, um, what the heck is it called? There's the, It's a board, but you don't want any of that in there. You want just flat plywood type board. <laughs> Um, I know that uh, Ken said that um, he does all over shirts with that method, which yep. is amazing because those things sell for so much money. 
Oh yeah, they absolutely do. And again, it's for that same reason, because you're going to have to tape everything down. And yeah. so when you're piecing your design, you want to piece it. So it just barely, and I mean, just barely overlaps. Um, because again, you're going to end up with a white mark if you don't. So you want them just to barely overlap. It also allows for you to have all of the, you know, the triple and double pressings that you're going to need without moving it. Can you imagine having to move a shirt that you're trying to do an all over method? It just doesn't work. So by putting it on that bigger board, laying it out there, you're just moving the board. You're not moving the shirt. You're not moving the transfer. You're less likely to have the off gassing, the shifting, all those things that we know are an issue. Yeah. Um, somebody asked about cardboard. Cardboard's going to bend. So oh, absolutely. Yeah. Cardboard is not forgiving at all. Um, you need something with some rigidity to it. So that's why cardboard is not the best thing. It's an investment. If you want to be able to press these larger items, go invest. I think it's like probably 20 bucks or, or less in a board and some Teflon by the roll and invest in it because I haven't, like I said, I haven't had to change mine out in three years. So it's an investment for you to be able to have peace of mind, which is worth its weight in gold in this business. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so uh, the Teflon by the roll, uh, you can get it from Condi. If you scroll oh. up in the chat, I, um, I did put a, a link there for it. I couldn't um, find it or I would have put it in my notes. I could not find it by the roll. That's all right. It's all right. Um, Let's see. Uh, so what what size printer do you use, uh, Nikki? So I have a 13 by 19. Printer? Um, oh, yep. okay. Yeah. 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 I have the 13 by 19. But when I first started, I had a Sawgrass 400. So not only was I piecing, I was double pressing, which is like a double whammy <laughs> on things. And I was using, and that's where the board method came in because I needed to be able to do larger items. So I had to piece my items together. And then I had to double press them on my heat press because you only have a 15 by 15 and you've got an eight and a half by 14 sheet and, you know, you start figuring it out. And that's where the method really became something I wanted to teach about instead of just saying, oh, just use a board. OK, well, what else do you do? So piece your design if you have a smaller press or a smaller printer, piece your design, uh, splice it in your program, whatever your program is, print it out tape it together and then do the same thing the way we just did it i'm um, using the 15 by 15 lay it out it stops everything from moving and when you are piecing your design and let's say you have to press it if you press on a pieced section just walk away from it because you're going to end up with a white spot there is no way of getting around it especially if your paper's drooping and you've pressed right on top of that line you have created such a mess so to avoid that mess board method for double piecing papers and whatnot is the best way i can explain it we're gonna have to do a live one day on um how to piece the uh images together oh absolutely yeah i i've perfected that art <laughs> Yep, absolutely. Let me see who else. Hi, David. Thanks for allowing me to do this, guys. By the way, I was super excited to be here. So I love being able to teach as much as I can. And hopefully I have opened your eyes up to a different method and made it feel a little bit more comfortable, like you can conquer this. And accessible as well. Yeah. Yeah. For oh, sure. absolutely. Absolutely. So again, you can get your Teflon, which I could not find it. So I apologize. You can get your Teflon right from Condi. Um, you can't get your board. I'm sorry. They don't no. sell the boards yet. It's not a thing. You have to go to the Home Depot or the Lowe's for that. No, but um, I, I do have one right here. But um, yeah, that, we don't sell it. Got it. I think got it from Home Depot or Lowe's. See? Mm -hmm. see? But the Teflon does help when you're putting that over there. So I highly recommend getting your Teflon. And I hope you guys now know that they have the neoprene by the yard. And there are so many possibilities. I am making a ton of game board designs. So you guys will be able to go and make game boards for Christmas. So there you go. Yeah. And we actually have a three millimeter and five millimeter neoprene. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. So, so whatever, go and whatever. get it in the, in the five millimeter, just for those who are trying to get a visual, is like the thicker mouse pad material. Yeah. 
that's yeah. the best way to, to visualize it, if you will. That's a really good, yeah, that's a good point. Yep. Awesome. Please give, please give her more time another day. Oh, thank you. Oh, she will. Yes, <laughs> she will. She kind of like me here. A little. <laughs> Just a, a little, little bit. bit, just a little. <laughs> where are my games? They want to know where my games are, Sprite. Am I able to tell them that? They're asking questions. Does the Teflon and sublimation not go? Okay, so that's a great question. And I was waiting for somebody to ask that. And that is, does the Teflon and the sublimation not work well? If you notice, I put butcher paper on top of that Teflon sheet. That's to protect the Teflon. Yes, it causes a vapor barrier kind of thing. But the, what you want to do is put your butcher paper on that. What the Teflon does is just allows it to, 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 to protect the wood and your substrate that you're using. So it's not snagging on there. And it allows for the board to slide back and forth, right? So that's why I cover it with Teflon. Then I cover it with butcher paper and then I put my substrate down, my transfer paper, and then another piece of butcher paper. I make the ultimate burrito, if you will, right? So that's why you still want to have the Teflon. It's just for ease for sliding and it protects the wood if there were ever to have any off gassing come off of that image or under your substrate for whatever reason. You want to protect that wood because you don't want it to off gas on a future project. So put the Teflon because you can wipe it down. Butcher paper, as always with this, butcher paper, your image or your substrate, your image, and then um, another piece of butcher paper by all means. Yes, I do have my designs. They're in my Etsy store under the Sassy Subber. So I will be adding the rest of them. Um, I've been sick. So this is the first I've really been back since I've been sick. Um, but thank you guys a ton. I'm going to answer more questions here in the comment section. Hopefully you guys learned something today. Um, <clears throat> Yes, it is a half inch board. You can use MDF or plywood. Go into the Home Depot section. They're kind of usually standing up like this. They're in a little small section. I get the two foot by four foot board. I usually have them cut it down and I cut it down into two different sizes because I have two different size presses. So I have a 15 by 15 and the board I use for that one is 16 by 24. And then the remaining piece I use for my larger press, which is 16 by 20. It allows for me to have blankets. It allows for me to have full complete shirts, whatever it may be. It allows for ease of being able to move it. I can clip it to the board. I can tape it to the board. And this this way, my paper isn't drooping when I go to press because that's where the issue comes in. Remember, when your press comes down on your substrate, it causes a gully, especially on the edges, right? It causes it to dimple in. So you also want to make sure that your pressure is okay. By adding the board, you do increase the pressure a little bit. So check your pressure. Make sure that you have um, some extra items laying around until you perfect your method. Once you perfect that method, you're golden. You will remember it forever. Put it in your little sublimation Bible, if you will, on what you have done so that you will know for the next time that you go to press something. Um, it's really just a helping hand, if you will. So you made that investment on the 15 by 15, but don't let the 15 by 15 stop you from creating some amazing things outside of that 15 by 15 press. And when you're ready, come over to Condi and get a new heat press. Um, or if you've got a small printer, again, those are your options, but you're not stuck. And that was why we did this class today is to prove that you're not stuck. There's always a way around it somehow. We don't want to use cardboard. Cardboard is not something good to use as the board method. You don't want to use metal, again, because of how the connect, connect, connectivity, conductivity, ah, sorry, of the metal. You don't want to use that either. You really just want to use plywood or an MDF board. Mine happens to be the board to the inside of my shelving unit that I have back there that I didn't need. So I just cut it down. Um, really it's an investment worth making if you want to do those larger items i'm going to go one quick look see if there's any more can you use multiple press items at one time you could just make sure you tape them really well down to your board absolutely you can um i love that thinking we're all crafters we are absolutely all crafters it's where we all started Yes, you can um, actually use a foam kit for the lanyards, but you, you know what? That is also 
the board method is fantastic for lanyards. If you are doing lanyards, the board method is a lifesaver. You can tape down the edges to your board and just shift it back and forth. And now you can do a lanyard without it dripping over the edge. Maybe you're a bow maker like I am. You don't want that ribbon dripping off the edge either. Again, because it shifts. Whatever the case is, that board will save you. Let me go find a piece of board I had left over from another project. I love the comment section. Thank you guys so much. You guys have been absolutely amazing. I can't thank you enough. So uh, here we go, Sprite. I think we're good. Yeah, I like um, I like Eldrick's uh, uh, quote there. Problems are just solutions waiting to be found. Yep, always. There's never yep. a problem. Yep. It's just like well, there's such thing as failure. All right, Nikki, I'm going to see you soon. You're going to be on a live with us soon. We're going to do the uh, the split method on the paper. I'm looking forward to it. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Nikki, once again, thank you for being here. I'm so glad you're feeling better. Oh, thank um, you. I'm glad to be back in full force. Yeah, I, I know. I can tell I, you just you look so much better oh. than, than the last live I saw you on. So COVID three times is just horrible. <laughs> I just yeah. have to tell you. I know I have to travel next month and I'm like, well, it's going to happen. I'm going to get it. You know what? That's it. I was like, you know what? I'm just doing it. I'm out living my best life teaching where I can. And um, I'm glad to be virtual now that I'm, I'm feeling better. But yeah. yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. And I absolutely a pleasure every single time. Well, bye guys. Bye, Nikki. Thank you.